I'm addicted to autocrafters. There's just something so incredibly satisfying about chucking a bunch of raw materials into the top of a machine and then have actual components being outputted. But although this system is cool and dispensers are horrible to craft and I will do anything in my power to automate the creation of them, this isn't how 90% of you are going to be using autocrafters. So let's try and construct some real world uses. Bulk block storage. So let's say we have an iron farm and it is incredibly efficient. Instead of storing up all of the iron ingots, which takes massive amounts of storage or sugar boxes, we can now store up iron blocks. Let's just build up a little water stream here with some honey blocks on the corner so that we align the items along this edge. The first thing we do in the case of a real iron farm is filter out all of the poppies. And then from this point forth, it will just be iron ingots. And I'm hoping that this little circuit here will convert those iron ingots into blocks. So this is just one module. I'm gonna stack them up in a second. But we've got two lots of hoppers running into the crafter. This composter is running a signal strength of 8 into the side of this comparator, so it will only give an output when we get a signal strength of 9 through the crafter, which means that we have got an iron block crafted. That will then power the crafter, shooting it out into what is going to be a hopper line over here. Now this single module seems to be working quite nicely, but our iron farm is way too efficient. So I've stacked up some more modules, and they're keeping up with the demand very, very well. Now, I've made a few minor changes here. So each one of these crafters can have up to three hoppers running into it. So all three of these hoppers are running into this crafter, which means it's crafting iron blocks very quickly. The redstone for the actual crafter powering itself has stayed exactly the same. But to save on some comparators, I've now replaced our composter with a crafter that is filled, so it's giving a signal strength of 9 into the side of this comparator and a signal strength of 8 into the side of this comparator in subtract mode, which means both of these comparators will only give an output when the crafter is filled. Now, if we were to expand this out even further and make an even bigger array of block creators, you can see that this system of having three lots of hoppers for each crafter actually makes a fairly resource light build. I mean, there's there's not many comparators involved, and there's not really that much redstone involved. There's even a giant gap of airspace. I mean, when does that happen in redstone contraptions? This thing is very, very cool. Now, just for fun, I made it as compact as possible. And I was really, really happy with this. Just as I was about to vigorously pat myself on the back, I saw it spitting out pressure plates, and now I don't want to talk about it. But all the downloads for all of the worlds in this video will be down in the description, so if you want to point and laugh at it, you can. You can also be confused by this. I mean, this is both cheaper but also more expensive in some ways and it's both smaller and bigger in some ways i don't know i'm just as confused as you are buddy bamboo converter let's say you have an incredibly efficient bamboo farm and you want to convert those bits of bamboo into the bamboo blocks then into bamboo planks well i guess first things first bamboo farms don't generally make use of water streams instead they make use of hopper mine carts which i've now simulated very effectively but i think the logic behind this one should be pretty similar to the system with the iron farm we just need to double the number of craftings. In fact, it might not just be similar, it could be exactly the same. All I have to do is blank out all of the spots in the bottom crafter, and if we switch on our bamboo farm, we should see that we're getting bamboo blocks, and then the planks are being chucked out, because every single time a bamboo block is being crafted, it's also powering the bottom crafter which is converting it into planks. This thing's ridiculously simple. And of course, because it's exactly the same as the iron version, it can be stacked up in the same way using the same techniques. But what's even more exciting is that my stupidly compact and lag-friendly design should work with the bamboo farm. And it is ridiculously satisfying. Yes, it is functioning. Yes, look at this thing. Oh, that is so cool. I'm so glad that this is working. It's tiny. It's silent. There's no lighting updates. And to be honest, it's not even that expensive. But wait, there's more. What if you have a really big bamboo farm and you want to output to a water stream instead of a hopper line? Well, this system can handle that as well. And oh my goodness, I might even be able to make this <laughs> stupidly compact if I just face each of these crafters in this direction and then I can have droppers in the middle here. My goodness, if this works. I'm turning on our bamboo farm and we should see... Planks will start to pop out of this thing. And the dropper is not filling up. This is so good. <laughs> now, the reason I'm excited is because the reason that this works is the reason the iron one broke. And that is because the way that this functions is we're powering this note block with the comparator. And then the observer is detecting the powering and firing a pulse. The issue is... It also detects the unpowering, so every single time this comparator turns on, we get two pulses through the crafter, which meant occasionally it would create pressure plates or iron nuggets. The thing is, those two pulses there are the right amount for these two planks to be fired out 
by the dropper, which means we don't need any circuitry, any extra bits to do the dropping. We can just do it all within the system. I didn't expect to be so excited by this, but here we are. This might be the neatest little circuit I've ever created. Anyway, let's move on to gold farms. And I gotta say, simulating this gold farm, a little bit more complicated than simulating the other ones. But you know, you don't really get water streams in the nether, so I'm having to get creative here. A little bit embarrassing that that didn't work first try, but we do now have a, a functional gold farm simulator. You can see our little gold nuggets traveling along like this. Now, of course, one of the main things with the gold farm is there's multiple drops in there. So we've got rotten flesh and we also have non-stackable items, which means before we do anything, we actually need to filter out the gold nuggets. Just a regular overflow protected item filter should do the trick. And now we need to actually make the crafting system work. And my brain, my brain is struggling because I want to do this well. And here's the thing. All right. I think I have done it well. But it, it's, it's a little bit complicated. Just after the success of the bamboo craft, I really wanted to make something really small and compact. And this is, this is pretty small and compact. Let's switch this thing on. I mean, it is very cool to watch work. It is a tiny bit noisy. I wish it didn't have the clicking sound, but then this is pretty noisy. Gold farms in general are very noisy. So you can see our gold nuggets are being crafted up and turned into ingots. And then our little crafter down here is gradually crafting up all of the gold ingots and when we get ourselves a gold block you will see that that pops out onto the floor now the way that i'm doing this is we've got the item filter up at the top here and this redstone clock actually uses the item filter to be powered essentially if the item filter is detecting items it switches on the redstone clock which constantly pulses this top crafter which means it's constantly trying to craft something but nothing can be crafted with gold nuggets unless it's a full block. And when it is, it will be pushed down to the next crafter. And then we have the same signal strength circuit that we've used in the previous few. Except it has been modified slightly just so it fits within this footprint. It works very well and is very consistent. So let's stack it up. First thing I've done is move this piston over to avoid bud issues when they are stacked up. So now our crafter is going to output to a hopper line. As I was looking at this to copy the design and rebuild it, I noticed a bit of a mistake with my redstone. The repeater would power the redstone line that is only meant to have a signal strength of nine, giving it a signal strength of 15. But this has the unintended consequence of automatic backlog clearing i'm an accidental genius the best kind of genius so here is our system and yeah it does look a little bit bulky but then if you ignore the item filter and just focus on this stuff down here still a bit of a chonker but it's it's not that massive and of course everything works properly and all of our gold nuggets that are pouring in here are gradually being converted into gold blocks Takes a little while, you know, gold blocks, they, they take a while to form, but they are coming in. Remember, it takes 81 gold nuggets to create one gold block. So despite what this may look like, remember, this system here is making your storage system 81 times smaller. You are using 81 times less shulker boxes to store the same amount of gold. That is obscene. And I've just come up with a way to make it slightly more compact using the same observer and note block combination that we tried in the iron farm and successfully used in the bamboo farm. Now I'm hoping that we don't get any gold nuggets out of this thing or any pressure plates out of this thing because the gold ingots are so slow to form that the two pulses shouldn't affect it. Let's see, everything is kicked into gear and our crafter is filling up. The fact that it's filling up with a gold block is good. Now let's see how long between the pulses. It takes forever. It's so, it takes so long for a new gold ingot to come in because gold ingots require nine gold nuggets that the two pulses, look, there it is, there's the second pulse. There's no chance that we would get anything else being created. There's, there's zero chance. It couldn't happen. I guess the only way that it could happen is if this crafter overflowed and basically filled up with gold nuggets and then it was creating loads of gold ingots, then that would be an issue. But that shouldn't be possible. So I've got to say, I'm pretty sure to bits with this thing. I think it's around about as small as it could be. It's just one block bigger than a regular item filter. Very, very satisfying. This has been fun. I've really enjoyed working on these systems. I have a few ideas for various different bigger farms and multi-stage crafting systems with furnaces and everything like that involved. All of that will be coming soon.